Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some prize picks plays I like for NBA on Wednesday, uh, October the 26th. Big Wednesday slate, 10 games tonight, so there are a lot of options on the prize picks board. Uh, prize picks board. I'm recording this video around 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Wednesday, so recording it early Wednesday afternoon. Most of the boards posted for today, and um, we have a lot of props available. I did find three props that I liked taking a first look at the board, so we're going to talk through these three plays, guys. We're going to share why I like them. Before we do, though, make sure you guys hit that like button down below. If you do enjoy these prize picks videos, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. Also, if you have not signed up for prize picks, use promo code NOAH. When you do sign up, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code. And I want to recap our plays from Tuesday uh, because we did give out two picks on Tuesday's slate and we hit both of our picks for Tuesday. So hopefully you guys tailed those two picks. We took Chris Paul's over PRA, 26 and a half. His line actually got bumped down to 26. Obviously not ideal to see that, but Chris Paul still came through for us. And I, I really explained in depth why I like that pick. I think Chris Paul finished with like 33 uh, points rebound assists. That one went over. Andrew Wiggins, 24 and a half PRA. That one was the really big sweat because Wiggins, I think he needed he needed two or three points, rebounds, and assists in like the fourth quarter. And it was looking like it was going to be a blowout, but the Warriors brought the starters back in. Wiggins came back in. He played like three or four minutes before he got pulled because it did turn into a blowout. And I think he grabbed like three rebounds in like three minutes. And that was what put him over. He just barely went over. He finished with 25. Um, hopefully you guys got that line in at 24 and a half. I know it actually did get bumped up to 25 and a half. So hopefully you got it in at 24 and a half. You know, I always recommend that you guys have notifications on. So that way, every time I upload these videos, you can put the entry in as soon as I do. Um, and you know, if there is a potential line change, hopefully you're able to get it in before that. But yeah, we cast our two picks on Tuesday. Let's try and do it again for this uh, big Wednesday slate. So three picks to talk about, guys. We're going to start off in the fantasy score category. First fantasy score prop that I'm liking for today is going to be Evan Mobley. And when you look at Evan Mobley, he's not really been playing that well this season, but I do like him to go more than 31 and a half fantasy points today. You look at his game log so far in their first three games, he's gone under in all three games. Um, against Toronto, 25.7 fantasy points. Chicago, that game was a blowout. He only played 24 minutes, uh, but he had 24 fantasy points. And then their last game against the Wizards, he had 28 fantasy points. But worth noting that, you know, Evan Mobley last season was a fantasy point per minute player. Um, he had a 20.7% usage rate. He averaged right exactly at a fancy point per minute. And then you factor in, you know, Darius Garland is still out right now. So we could take Darius Garland off the floor and see if those numbers do change. I'm assuming Mobley will see a, you know, bump up in usage and his fancy point per minute production will see a bump up as well. Um, but it actually stays about the same. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at Mobley, he averaged around a fancy point per minute last season. He's normally going to play like 35, 36, 37 minutes. In their two competitive games this season, Mobley played 36 and 37 minutes. So if we're getting upper 30s in minutes from Mobley, if he can average just a fantasy point per minute, he's going to go over this fantasy score line. And you look at this matchup against the Magic, it is like the best possible matchup for Mobley. So far this season against the power forward position, the Magic have been like the worst team in the league. They're giving up the most points to power forwards. They're giving up the most fantasy points to power forwards as well. I think it's a really, really good matchup for Mobley. There's also been some talks from the co from the coaching staff. They want Mobley to be more involved because I know he hasn't really been involved in the offense lately. He's not really been taking a ton of shots. Uh, they said because he missed some time in the preseason, they you know it's been a little bit tough to get him going. But there's talks about him you know potentially getting more touches, you know getting the ball more, potentially taking more shots. So that's even better. You factor in the matchup. You factor in that this fancy score line is kind of lowered because of you know Mobley's poor performance this season. But we have previous data that shows he's been about a fantasy point per minute player. Now, his usage might not be as high this season playing with Donovan Mitchell. But I think while Darius Garland is still out, there is going to be some usage available for guys like Mobley. Um, you know, Jared Allen's not really going to soak up a lot of usage. But Mobley definitely will. Levert will. Uh, Jetty Osmond coming off the bench will get some usage. I think Mobley's going to average around a fantasy point per minute. He should play 36, 37, 38 minutes. It's a fantastic matchup. I feel like this fantasy score line could be a little bit higher. So... I'm going to be taking Evan Mobley to have more than 31 and a half fantasy points today as our first pick. Next pick is going to be a points prop. Told you guys that I don't really take points props too often, but when there are some that do stand out, I, I do play them. And this is one I do like. More than 25 and a half points for Trey Young really stands out to me today. So first off, we're getting some pretty good odds on this play. Right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, Trey Young's points prop, it is set at 25 and a half, but with minus 140 on the over. So a lot of juice coming in on the over, 25 and a half points for Trey Young. 
You look at so far this season, he's only gone over this points prop in one out of their three games, which was last game against Toronto or against uh, Charlotte. Excuse me. He had 28 fancy or he had 28 points. Previous two games, he had just 25 and 23 points. But so far this season, Trey Young has the fifth highest usage rate in the entire league. Only guys that have a higher usage rate than Trey are Luca. Darius Garland, Embiid, and John Morant. Trey has a 34.7% usage rate this season. Next highest guy on, on Atlanta is DeJounte Murray, and DeJounte Murray has a 22.9% usage rate. I know a lot of people came, coming into the season, including myself, were wondering, you know, how would Trey and DeJounte play alongside each other? Would Trey lose usage? That hasn't been the case. Trey's had a monster usage rate this season to, to start the year. He's playing huge, huge minutes every night. And also, he's been taking a ton of shots, and that's something that I, you know, obviously, when you're taking a points prop, you want guys to be to shoot the ball. And Trey's field goal attempts so far this season, 22, 24, and 25. He's just been shooting the ball really poorly. Shot 31% from the field and 11% from three in their first game of the season, 29% from the field and 36% from three in their second game. And in their last game against Charlotte, he shot 36% from the field and 25% from three. He also lost some minutes in that game against Charlotte because it did turn into a blowout. So pretty much everything's been going wrong for Trey in terms of like shot efficiency. He's not really been efficient this season, but the volume has been there, and that's what we can really bank on here. We know Trey's going to shoot the ball 20-plus times. He's historically been a very good shooter. He's been a guy that can get hot, can put up big scoring games. The matchup against the Pistons, I think, is good. You know, the Pistons... They're not a team we should worry about on the defensive end. So far this season, the Pistons do have the fourth worst defensive rating in the league. I think it's a really good spot for Atlanta here to put up some points to hope, obviously, to probably get a win. And we know Trey Young is going to be the focal point of their offense. He's going to be taking a ton of shots. He's going to have a big usage rate. If he can just shoot the ball 35, 40% from the field, he's probably going to finish with 26 or more points. Um, and I think the volume's going to be there. That's what we really have to bank on. I like the matchup as well. So I'm going to be taking Trey Young to have more than 25 and a half points today. And then third and final prop, we're going to talk about a rebound prop. We're going to go down to Laurie Markkinen. Laurie Markkinen has been playing really, really well with the Jazz this year, and he's been rebounding at a really high rate. So far this season in their first three games, um, tw 13 rebounds against Minnesota, 12 rebounds against the Pelicans, and six rebounds against uh, Houston in their last game. I think he, in their season opener against Dallas, or against Denver, excuse me, I think he did have four rebounds. That was their, uh, I think that was their season opener game. But he's had some big rebounding games in two out of their four games this year. And he's been you know, rebounding really, really well. He's got he's averaging 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. I know his total or his rebound chances have been pretty good as well. I should have pulled this up before I started recording the video. Um, but I know his rebound chances have been pretty high. I think he is second on the team in rebound chances. Uh, I think Jared Vanderbilt leads the team with in terms of rebound chances. He does. Jared Vanderbilt, 17 rebound chances per game. But uh, second on the team is Laurie Marketing, 13.8 rebound chances per game. And again, he's averaging 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. This line right now on DraftKings Sportsbook is set at 8.5, albeit there is some pretty heavy juice on the under, uh, minus 150 on the under right now. But with this line being at 8.5 on DraftKings Sportsbook, I like getting it at 7.5 on price picks. I think at some point they probably will bump this up to 8. So want to get it in at 7.5. I think it's a good matchup here for Laurie Marketing. We just saw these teams play recently. I know he's, he went under his rebound prop in that game, um, only had six rebounds. I do want to look at how many rebound chances he had in that game uh, just to see you know if he was still up there. So I'm going to go to pull this up and go to last game against Houston. So last game against Houston, he did have, let's see, rebound chances. He still had 14 rebound chances in that game, which was second on the team behind Jared Vanderbilt. So the rebound chances have been there pretty much every game. He's been around the basket. He's been playing a lot of minutes. Um, and at, you know, Houston, they play at a really fast pace. They're not a good defensive team. This could definitely be a high-scoring game like it was on Monday when they played. You could see a lot of shot attempts, a lot of potential misses, a lot of rebound chances for Markkinen. Um, he's been rebounding really well this year. So I like getting this line at 7.5, especially when it is, you know, it's at 8.5 on some other sites. Getting it at 7.5 is definitely some good value. So going to be taking Laurie Markkinen to have more than 7.5 rebounds as our third and final pick for today. And this is what I'll, uh, I'll be playing for, for Wednesday's Big Ten game slate, guys. I'll definitely probably be sharing some more picks I like for today. Um, you know, me, prospects might even be adding some more props at the time I'm making this video. So I will be sharing more plays I like. I'll share those over on Patreon. If you guys want to check out my additional prospects plays, sign up for Patreon. Link down below in the description. Check all that out if you are interested. I do also provide additional DFS content, DraftKings, Yahoo, NBA DFS. I cover those sites over on Patreon. Um, also have a Discord chat you can join for Patreon members. So 
Lots provided over there. Check it out. Link down below in the description if you are interested. But best of luck as always, guys. Hopefully we can uh, cash out on all three of these plays. I would probably recommend that you guys do a flex play or that you mix and match these uh, these three plays just because if we do get a pick wrong and you do a flex play, you can still make some money. If you mix and match and we still get it and we get a pick wrong, you'd still make some money. Whereas if you do a power play, you have to get every pick right, which obviously is a little bit tougher. I want us to get every pick right, but we're just that's just not going to happen every day. So probably flex plays your, your best bet here, but you can choose how you want to play. It's all the, you know, it's always up to you. Uh, but again, good luck, you know, to all, all you guys playing some some player props tonight. Hope you guys cash out, make a little bit a uh, bit of a uh, bit of money. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and also check out Price Picks if you have not yet. Sign up for Price Picks and use promo code NOLA. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code. But good luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.